we're back at it, and this is my fault for making the worst decisions of my life. What's your fault? Uh, just everything in general. Well, yes, that's true. But uh, are we are we blaming our lateness on your... I was traumatized because I did something really <laughs> stupid yesterday, and I trimmed my beard, and now it looks really awful. I mean, you did shave some age off of your beard, so there's that. Yeah, but you did threaten to divorce me like seven times yesterday. As I should have. Wow. You earned it. All right. Getting back to the movie... I'm Tyler. I'm Shay. And this is Cinematically Correct. And this week was your choice, which was the Discord choice. Right. And it was Contact. Yes. So this movie was actually supposed to have been done weeks ago. And as always in our movie club on Discord, we drop the ball and are always extremely late. Yeah. So, but, uh, but we were getting around to it. I think in everything we were extremely late. I think that's just our thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're casually late. It's fine. Um, but we're getting around to it. Um, I'm actually impressed that we did because it's science fiction, which I do not like, and has Jodie Foster, which... um You also don't like. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because I actually didn't dislike her in this movie. There are certain movies like Taxi Driver and Hannibal where she, her acting just bugs me. Like, I don't have a reason. I don't have an explanation. Silence of the Lambs. She's not in Hannibal. That's what I meant. Silence of the Lambs. Anyways. I don't have an explanation. I don't have a reason to why her, it's just the way she speaks just bugs me. Um, but in this movie, it really wasn't as prominent of an issue. So hmm. it's like Mini Driver. Can't watch her talk. Just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Just can't do it. Does that so. ruin Goodwill Hunting for you? Yeah. Every scene she's in. Yeah. I want to just, I want to turn it off. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, you're wrong, but okay. <laughs> but anyways, so you did get a beer for this movie. I do have a beer. And this is actually the beer that they drank in the movie. So we go entirely low energy for the choice. What, what does that mean? I mean, it's just, it's the beer that they had in the movie, Medallia. And as it should be. If you can find a beer that they actually drank in the movie, then why not? Now, this was the only beer available in Puerto Rico, which is where they shot the movie, correct? The opening scene. Yeah. Or the opening segment of the movie. So... It's also the tiniest beer can I've ever seen in my life. It's a 10-ounce beer can. Or you just have massive hands. Yeah, let's go with both. That's fine. It tastes like a, any regular mass-produced beer. It's like a Bud Coors oh, kind okay. of... So, I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's not a whole lot of, it's not a whole lot of flavor. It's, it's inoffensive. It's... But if you're having like a contact party, you should probably have those beers. Like I feel... I mean, it's also a light beer, so I'm cutting down on the calories. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, I'm not going to walk into that, so... Um, okay, so do you have a brief synopsis? Brief synopsis. Brief synopsis. Jodie Foster... Grows up to want to be an astro astronomist, astronomer, astronomer, astrologist. No, no, it's not astrology. It's astronomer. As astronomer, <laughs> it's definitely astronomer. And I look like the biggest idiot ever. Great astronomer. Well, the only reason I know it's astronomer is because there's a quote in the movie, like that's on a sign, and it says astronomy is looking up, yeah. which I also found like an adorable quote, and I feel like I'm going to use that now. All right. So. Regardless, astronomer, and she spends her entire life trying to prove that aliens are real. Aliens contact her, they build a machine, and she goes to visit them. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It sounds more um, children-style movie when you say it the way you said it. It's but definitely not. It's no. a very slow-paced like, well, It's not a slow movie, but it's... It's, it's a two-hour... It's, it's a measured movie. kind of movie. It's yeah. not It's not a action movie. It's not a comedy. It's not, it's not anything other no. than an evenly-paced drama science fiction kind of yeah. yeah yeah okay um all right so imdb yeah. um i mean again this is as with a lot of movies we've done lately there's not a lot of characters that truly matter but there's a few so we can start off with jodie foster because yeah. um, she's the main character um she plays eleanor arroway is that who's saying arroway yep um so she as a young girl has fallen in love with astronomy um, I think her fall, her love of it came from her father. Um, they had t told him that she had a really strong aptitude for science. So she, he gave her like a telescope and a, was it CB radio? Is that yeah. What? Okay. 
And so she spent her life like trying to find out if aliens exist. And I think it also connected with her trying to understand if um, when they say that like, you know, somebody dies and they go to the sky, the sky is that the same thing? And yeah. you see that when her father passes away and she's, you know, paging him and trying to find him. Yeah. And then that connection comes back later on when they're connecting the two schools of thought between science and religion, which we'll discuss in depth, I'm sure. But um, I think that does feed her her drive. So, I mean, if you don't know who Jodie Foster is, I, I literally don't know if you've ever watched a movie. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, she's very well known. I mean, I... There is another movie I actually want to do of hers because I read the book, uh, Panic Room. But... I actually own Panic Room, so it's in the house. You could watch it at any time. Right, but I, I wanted to do that because I want to see how it compares to the book. But... Um, what did you think of her character? I mean, it was fine. I mean, Jodie Foster is always, in, in my mind, a serious actress. Like, she, I don't think I've seen her in a comedy or something not I'm not sure either. I know dramatic. she just won a Golden Globe this past weekend, no. but um, I don't know what it was for. I, I don't think I've ever seen her in a lighthearted movie. I could be mistaken, but... Let us know, guys. I, yeah. I, I don't know either, because I the movies I've seen, obviously, were dramas. So, hmm, I mean, that's all I got. Um, David Morse plays Ted Arroway, her father. Um, yep. so we had done a previous film of his. The Rock. Yes. Um, I mean, he's not in much of the film, but he plays a father. I and mean, an alien. Right. But I mean, he's very fatherly. I mean, there's no, I don't know. He's a stereotype of a father. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just a good hearted guy that working class and normal guy. Yeah. Uh, so I'll skip ahead a little bit. IMDb has these in weird order. Um, but Matthew McConaughey plays Palmer Joss, can't not mention him. So he's a, hold on, a man of the cloth without the cloth, as he's described himself. He's a theologian that is not a priest. Yeah, so he mastered in divinity, but he couldn't handle the celibacy. Is right. that, yeah. Um, so I like him. I mean, I like Matthew McConaughey, so it's hard to not like him. Um, but he's basically the guy who is challenging her views on whether or not God exists and whether or not that can match up with her ideals of science and needing evidence and facts. Right. Um, so they have like a really good back and forth and I didn't need it to be a love story. I mean, I never I, need it to be I a love story. I kind of felt that it was a little bit ham fisted in there that they would fall in love. Well, it just didn't need it to just, happen. You can be challenged on your ideals by anyone. It doesn't yeah. need to be a romantic relationship. It could also be someone of the same gender. Like they could have had a woman be that person and have no no chemistry whatsoever and just be friends. They're like they like to bat banter and debate back and forth. Yeah. And now which... I have opinions on all of why they needed to make it that way and whatever. But anyways, I love Matthew McConaughey. Um, he's in a lot of things, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's in how to lose a guy in 10 days. Frailty. Yeah. So he, he's in a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure you all know him. So there's that. All of the Buick commercials. <laughs> Recently. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to mention Tom Skerritt. He plays David Drumlin, which is basically the villain, yeah. I would say. Um, I, I recognize him, but I don't know what he's from. Do you? I honestly don't. He's always the villain. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen him not play a bad guy. Uh, so when I pull it up, Alien, which is oh, yeah. kind of ironic. Uh, Top Gun, MASH, uh, Days of Days, Lucky, um, but Alien would be the one I would know him from. Um, anyways. I mean, Alien and Top Gun. Yeah. Now that, now that you say that. Yeah, so anyway, he he plays the typical villain. I mean, there's not much depth to his character. Like, you, he does exactly what you would expect him to do, essentially. Yeah, be a dick at every possible opportunity. Yeah. So I don't have anybody else I need to mention except for, obviously, my connection, but I'm sure you're chomping at the bit for yours. Who's so. your connection? So my connection is Geoffrey Blake, who played Fisher. Um, he okay. was in DC Legends of Tomorrow with Jane Carr, who plays Nora in Gilmore Girls. Well, I have to mention William Fitchner. Uh, he was Was the... he the one that played the blind scientist? Yes. Okay. Kent Clark. Or Clark Kent. No, it's Kent Clark as a playoff Superman, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was in Black Hawk Down uh, with Orlando Bloom. Wow. You, I feel like Orlando Bloom is a really like the center of your connections. Uh, it's usually him or Sean Bean, <sighs> it seems to be. I mean... You know there's a lot of actors in Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. I, I know. Oh, okay. It's not always him. Yeah, it's sometimes... No, it's always him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we also can't not mention John Hurt. Can't, like, 
I mean, you have to mention him because he's also one of the biggest actors in this movie. And he's been in so many things. He was an alien with the other gentleman. So um, apparently they just pulled the, the actors from Alien and said, hey, you want to do another Alien movie? Interesting fact, they never actually had lines or scenes together in this movie. Really? Yeah. Huh. Weird. All right, Wasn't that's there a- another movie that you said was connected to a lot of actors in this movie? Uh, yes. Uh, the Jackal. Uh, so Matthew McConaughey turned down a role in The Jackal to star in this movie. And uh, Sidney Poitier turned down this movie for appearing in The Jackal. Weird. Yeah. I wonder which one felt it was the right decision. I mean, I would imagine both of them because they're both good movies. I don't think I've ever seen The Jackal. It's a very good movie. It's got Bruce Willis in it. And it's also based off a book like this movie. So... <laughs> Okay, well, anyways, let's move on. So, speaking of a book, uh, this movie was based off a book by Carl Sagan. Yes. Um, I don't really have much to say about him, but a lot of the quotes that are in this movie is from Carl Sagan, and he sounds like a very interesting person. He is basically a person that humanized science and brought it to the public. So, Bill Nye the Science Guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh... He had the the PBS special Cosmos where he talked about the universe Mm -hmm. and just made things more accessible and got people interested in science. So. Makes sense. He had the opinion that humans are a way for the universe to experience itself. Yes. Which I find fascinating. I just, a lot of the things that he said, or um, there was another quote of, um, what a waste of space that would be. What a um, terrible waste of space. Yeah, and that was a quote from him, but also he was quoting someone else as yeah. well. And I just, all of that stuff I find very fascinating. He, he's somebody I wish I had known in his lifetime to have a conversation Billions with. upon billions. Yeah. Of, as he was on to say, uh, he was also very famous for his uh, brown blazer turtleneck. Which she wore in Which she interview. did wear in the, uh, the pitch for the money to S.R. Hammond's. Now, sadly, he did pass before this movie actually was released. He was um, somebody who uh, kind of made sure the science was right and all that right. kind of stuff during the filming, but he did pass before it was released, so he never actually got to see the final product. He never got to see the final product. I think he would probably be very proud of it, and they do put the, the credit at the end. Yeah, yeah, we were all like, who's Carl? <laughs> I was like, who's Carl? And then I was like, oh, it's probably Carl Sagan. Yeah, so. Anyway. Obviously Carl Sagan. Yeah. Um, so... So, moving on to the movie. There's a lot of themes in this movie. There's a lot of complicated things in this movie. Which is funny, because going into this, I'm thinking a science fiction movie. I'm thinking this is going to be annoying, not realistic, just what you think of when you think of science fiction. You know, Let me ask you about that, because this is more based off of closer to reality. I know it's fiction, but did you enjoy this more than other science fiction, or did you... Yeah, so, I mean... It's possible, right? So I have a problem with science fiction when it's, it breaks the realm of reality. There's no way in the world that can happen. The special effects are too outrageous or just it doesn't make logical sense. It's not rational. That's when I start having a problem. This movie did its best to make it as plausible as possible. It's not real, but I can see a reality in which it was. So I did find it more interesting, and and I liked the fact that they really focused on uh, real debates that are that really people discuss and think about. Like it's not just uh, you know random topics; it's real things that people deal with on a day to day. So so it's it's more Star Star Trek, not Star Wars. So it's more based off the science rather than just the fantasy aspect of space. Sure. Yes. We're throwing we're throwing a bone to store for that uh, one. Okay. Just saying, uh, okay. I think it's more similar to the Star Trek side, where it's based off science and physics rather than just cool lightsabers, force fighting. Right. Okay. So at the beginning of the movie, one of the first things you learn is that her mo- Jodie Foster's mother has passed away. Yeah. And really soon into the movie, her father also passes away. So what, what- is what is Hollywood's obsession with killing? parents i don't know i mean disney does this right i mean this is like what disney is known for they kill off the parents and- at least one at least one every single movie name me a disney movie that doesn't have a half orphan right now the one thing i'll say about this movie is it does seem like the death was important for the plot 
So I do think that the loss of a, of a parent drove her to want to see if aliens existed because for her, aliens or her parents and all, just, they could be the same. Right. I mean, and then I guess they could be the same. Who's to say? So I think in her head that that loss really kind of drove her to astronomy. So I do think it's important um, part of the plot, but it's it's like... Ugh. We get it already. Just stop killing people's parents for the love of God. Like, Just... you've given me unrealistic idea that people die young far more than they actually do. Like, Hollywood, yeah. come on. Like, really. You're... You're making us all terrified as we get into Just our... Just have a normal, well-adjusted character with a, a, a wonderful family and two parents that they go home to Christmas for. Like, just... I guess that would be boring. I, I don't know. But, um, I mean, did you, did that at all bother you in this movie? Or did you think it was... It made sense? I mean, it made sense. I just... I don't know why they had to kill off both. I mean, she could have been left with her mother to have someone watch her. Because, basically, from, there, from when her father died, she's... Where? Relatives, orphans, like... That's not even covered. It's just kind of glossed over until she's now an adult. Right. And where they could have just had the mom and like, it's a tragedy and... Right. And the tragedy drove her to do yeah, what she needed to exactly. do. Yeah, exactly. Like, what What was or the just, point of... I don't understand the need to kill parents. Like, what is it? Like, it's just... Every movie we watch, it's... Somebody died. Yeah. Um. Okay, so... I guess this is a question that... It has to do with this part of the movie, but also the ending of the movie, so we're going to have to deal with it. Um, but anyways, in when she's visiting her aliens, right, um, they pick up sand and there's sparkle pattern yep. in the sand. You see that again at the end of the movie when she's picking up um, rocks or whatever outside of where the telescopes are. New Mexico. Yeah. Where else do you see the sparkle pattern? I don't know. So you see the sparkle pattern the first time in this movie when her father dies. Uh-huh. In the popcorn. So my question is, was that supposed to be foreshadowing that her father was going to come back as the alien? Does that mean anything? Is it a sign that heaven and aliens are connected, intermingled? Like, what What did they I mean by know. that? I don't know. I think, uh, knowing what I know about Carl Sagan, I would say that it's not intermingling with heaven. But I don't know. I just, I think it's a, just a cool tie in for later in the movie because they can do cool shots this movie was full of really cool shots the intro was great where they are panning out from earth and as the farther you go the the older the sound and the music is Mm -hmm. which would be accurate because it takes longer for it to get farther away right so i just i love those cool things where it has a very real basis on science. Right. But you don't think that they put the sparkle pattern in there for a reason? No, I think they did to try to tie everything all together. I just don't know if it was for religious purposes. Well, I mean, the director, Symaxis, stated he intended for the message of the film to be that science and religion can coexist rather than be opposing camps. So I do think that he was very much trying to tie them together. I think that's entirely possible. Okay, well, fine. I just... I don't know. I don't know if it was necessary. It's a cool thing to do just to put it in there so people can pick up on it. But I don't need, I don't know if I need anything more than that. Okay. Um, So this is something you had asked, but um, should finding out if aliens exist be a divisive thing? I would say no. I think I would like to believe that if we found out aliens were a thing, we would come together as a race of people like humanity would come together i mean i think it would be more likely that we would have to come together in the event it was more like an independence day kind of where they're coming to kill us all (laughs) but even then it's still i think it would be the ideal would be to bring us together and our differences don't really matter because we're all human whereas we're, we don't share as much of a, a commonality with the aliens. We don't have the sh- shared experience of living on Earth. We don't have all of the different experiences that humanity goes through on a day-to-day basis. Right. I, I mean, so in the film, the way that I viewed the divisiveness was that um, they weren't sure if the aliens were coming to us in peace or not. And they were concerned that if they 
followed instructions that they didn't quite understand that they could be basically setting themselves up for self-destruction. I mean, that is entirely fair because if you use something that you don't fully understand, it can be turned to horrifying purpose. So nuclear energy is a great example of that. So when they were developing the nuclear bomb, they thought that there was at least a slight chance that it would ignite the oxygen in the atmosphere and kill every human on Earth. And they did it anyway. <laughs> Which, thanks that it worked out. Like, I guess that's good. But right. I, I wish you wouldn't have gone into it knowing that that's a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it should be a unifying thing. It should be something that we should all rally behind and just come well, together over, I think. It seems that, at least nowadays, if you believe in religion, you don't believe in aliens. And if you believe in aliens, you don't believe in religion. Which they shouldn't be mutually exclusive. But it seems that it's almost like one side feels offended by the other. And I do think that comes back to the Big Bang Theory versus you well, know, think, the idea that God created everything. I think that is a, a part of it because it's, it's become a very divisive thing where you can't believe in scientific facts. Like, at the same time as you can believe in religion. Like, you can't believe in the Bible or the Quran, whichever religious document you, you hold. And also believe that evolution is real. Right. Well, I mean, of course you can. But a lot of people make it seem to, it has to be one or the other. I think that comes down to a failing because people are pushing their ideas on both sides. And people want to make, think, make the argument seem balanced and fair. So they give equal time and equal weight to both sides. And not always is there equal weight behind both arguments. Right. Agreed with that. Um, okay. So one of the questions posited by uh, Joss in the film was, is a human race fundamentally happier because of technology? And you were answering it during the film. So I figured you might as well answer it on the podcast. Uh, yes. I wrote it down. Uh, hold on. Is the world a better place with technology? Yes. Yes, we, yes, we are a better place. But, I mean, his question was more... Are you? Are we happier as a as a human race? I honestly don't know if I can answer that. I mean, I would say probably. I mean, we are seemingly on a trajectory of lower and lower violence on a massive scale than we have been in the past. Than we have been before technology. Yeah, I don't I mean, know that I believe that. There's since the last. I mean. <laughs> We are more effective at killing each other, which is problematic, but I think... We're also the, more notified of it now than we would exactly. have done. So it, it's more in your face and more present. But it doesn't mean it's happening on a larger scale. No. It also doesn't mean that it's happening on a lower scale, I suppose. But I, I feel that it probably is scaled back from how it used to be. Okay. So you'd say, yes, we are. I think we are in a better place. I think people are, by and large, better off. Maybe not happy, but happiness is not something you can really quantify. Fair. Are you ha are, Were the, the peasants that served a king back then eating nothing but moldy bread happy? Probably not. They were just, hap they were just unhappy about other things. Well, right. So, I mean, so this to me is like, we were talking about something else earlier today and I can't remember what it was, but it's, it's a lot to do with, you can't answer that question without acknowledging that there's external things that go into that as well. So do I think technology alone has made us fundamentally happier? My answer would be no. I do not think that technology has made us happier because you've got, you've seen a rise in suicide. You've seen a rise in online bullying. You've seen the uh what do you call it the echo chambers of information that's being created like all of this type of stuff that has negatively impact our culture cannot be ignored however um because of other progress you're talking scientific progress we're talking medical progress like all of this type of stuff that has made us happier i right. wonder if we had not had the internet age but all of the other progress continued so maybe scientists had the computers right but it wasn't on a mass level or something like that where we didn't have this obsession, this addiction to social media, to news outlets, to all of that stuff, if we would be happier than we are now. Because 
I see I, so negative impact on humans' psychological level that I just can't see that technology has helped us. I think that's a very fair argument because if we didn't have the negative parts of technology, then it's all straight benefit. Right, but, but we do have it, and it's hard to ignore. There are huge, staggering, significant improvements of quality of life overall as you get more technology. Electricity, love it. Fan, <laughs> just a fan of it. But uh, do you think that indoor maybe... Indoor plumbing, great idea. <laughs> Props to whoever did that. But do you think that maybe we could have had technological advances without it being on a mass scale? Like, maybe... The public didn't have the free access to everything that they have now in this addicting type level. I think the I think the problem is that we do need to get the information to people and get the technology to the masses. The problem is that you 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 can't separate that out. And that's that's where the no, it's too much. It's it's, it's you can't limit. You're the, being overstimulated yeah. because you have seven different things that you're watching at the same time. You're browsing the internet, you're watching YouTube, you're watching TV, you're... Right, and the algorithms are so advanced that they're able to target exactly what you want to hear, see, all yeah. that type of stuff, which means you live in an echo chamber. And if you live in an echo chamber that is not a positive echo chamber, I mean, I'm not even talking politically, but even like if you're having self-deprecating thoughts and you're you know, going to chat rooms that, that reinforce that, then you're going to get ads that reinforce that and books that reinforce that all promoted to you. That can't be, I mean, that's great technology wise that they were able to target such specific things to a human, but on a personal, like psychological level, that's I would be better damaging. off without it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so my answer is no. It's, but... it's a double edged sword. It's you, you can't throw out the good with the bad. You can't throw out just the bad. You have to keep both because progress moves forward. You can't, like, I'm not going back to living in the woods without electricity. <laughs> no, I can't I'm even not going, care because of that. I'm not going out in pooping in the woods again. I'm not, we're not, we're, we're past that. Right. It's just not a thing that I am going to be happy doing. But if I could go back in time with the knowledge that I have now and change the way that it was rolled out, I may. I, it may be something I would do. Abso I think that's absolutely. There need to be better stricter policies in place for that so that it doesn't turn into a divisive toxic place right um okay so not turning to a happier note at all <laughs> zero percent um one of the things that happens in this film is a suicide pill is presented to the people who are going to meet the aliens yes um and it is stated that nasa always does this when uh, astronauts go up into space and nasa um i believe his name was like john something Came out and was like, mm, no, actually, John that Glenn? he was he had a cameo in the film. I don't remember right. his exact name. I might have written down somewhere, but um, uh, Jason John. Oh, sorry, Jim Lovell. Jim Lovell. Okay, so, um, not so John he's Glenn. actually in the film, um, but he says no, that didn't happen. And also, a spokesperson for NASA themselves came out and said no. And if we were to have an astronaut who wanted to off themselves, they could just disconnect their oxygen. So. We don't need to do that. So, first of all, woof. Jesus, NASA. Like, just... What, way to go dark, man. Yeah. So, but... That's like, that's like saying, this is how you commit securities fraud. Don't do it. This is how you rob a bank. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't give up people instructions. Yeah. Like, goddamn. Dark. Really dark. Um, but Carl Sagan, the author, had decided that he was going to keep it in. First, he believes that NASA does do that. Um, but I, also, I don't think NASA's PR team's gonna be like, yeah, we we let them kill themselves if things go wrong. Yeah, and I'm not sure that's like I think that's like a legal gray area, so they might not be able to say that out loud. Um, but my point would be Do I be, think it's plausible that the first person to go into space probably had some thoughts or that conversation about what happens if things go wrong? Absolutely. They're NASA. They're not gonna talk about when things are perfect. They're gonna talk about everything. Uh, but do you have a problem with that being an option posited to a scientist? Is that, I mean, obviously assisted suicide is a huge debate and I think topic. it's a hot button topic, but I mean, in the fact that you don't know what will happen, if it's if it's a humane alternative, I don't think it's a an unreasonable thing to do. I yeah. mean, if if I'm just falling asleep and I'll never wake up again, that's better than being 
irradiated and dying of radiation sickness. That's better than any number of things that I can imagine. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that um, it's it's a realistic thing. It's I mean, I feel like when you're sending somebody up to a place and you know nothing about where they're going or what they're going to endure, it only makes sense to be humane about it and give them a way out if they need it. Yeah. It's um, certainly better than how NASA and the Russians have treated animals in space. Oh, geez, They nice. just send them up and say, bye. Yeah, I'm... Um, but it was a really big controversy and I can understand why NASA would be upset that that is being stated, but it's not a good look, but I can't imagine that they haven't at least considered it. Yeah. Um, another mundane controversy, um, was the fact that this movie had just randomly a second machine after the first one was blown up by a religious terrorist. There was just like another one just chilling. Can we say that just for the record that it's refreshing that it's not a minority terrorist and it's just a, a religious nutbag fanatic like yeah. yeah i mean very realistic again this movie did great with the realism that's christian isis it's not isis it's just it's a, a, a white mass murderer oh my god like two on the nose i don't know <laughs> i'm not sure yeah that's just it's it's something that is appropriate because it happened before 9 11 and yeah. i don't think that that national tragedy had clouded and colored people's judgment on that in a right. negative way no, we were actually sticking with facts. Yeah. So, you know, it's weird. Um, but sticking with what I was saying, Second Machine, did it bother you that there was just randomly like a really expensive Second Machine just chilling out there? I mean, I had seen this movie, so I had forgotten that. So I had written down, oh, fine, screw you then. We'll just build another one. To hell with it. Right. And then they, they had already built another one. Yeah. I mean, so I think the the creepy big guy in the sky... Um, said that they had created two because why create one if you can create two? At and, twice the price? Yeah. Didn't make any sense to me. Um, I well, don't... that's that's the U.S. government. Fiscally irresponsible to a fault. Like, Democrat, Republican, they all spend our money like it's their job. And it's not their job. It's their job to manage and act as a custodian for our taxes. Yeah. Um, so... I, don't, I don't have a problem of believing that they wasted... A half a trillion dollars building two of them? No. Okay. Well, I mean, so it did bother me on a level that I will talk about deeper a little bit later. However, it did bother me that it felt that the only reason that the other one was blown up was to ensure that Jodie Foster could go to space. It almost seemed as if they felt her character didn't have merit enough on her own to go, and she was clearly going to be beaten out by this guy. So clearly someone had to die. For her to get her spot. Like there was no other way. There was no other way to make that work and make the audience believe it and understand it and root for her. So you have to kill off the guy first. I mean, obviously. Like that's that's what it felt like. Like you just I thought that it was just they built in redundancy. You don't ever do something and not have a backup. But what was the purpose of blowing up the first one? Uh, if it wasn't to pave the way for Jodie Foster to go, what was the purpose? I mean, for the movie, that's exactly the purpose. In reality, it can 100% be attributed to a crazy person with a uh, suicide vest. Right. But for the movie, it was to pave the way for Jodie Foster, yeah. which they could have just, you know, picked her in the first place. She yeah, was that, like... that would have been... That, that, could, that could have taken out another 45 minutes of screen time. And it's not like they needed the 45 minutes. This is a two and a half hour movie. Yeah. They could have trimmed a little bit there and just been like, yeah, we have one machine. It's good. We're good. Yep, yeah. That's like, fine. I don't know that it was a necessary plot point. I really felt it was they didn't feel the audience would buy into the woman being chosen. So they just killed off the man, you know. So that's how I felt. Um, okay, stereotypes. So this movie is very heavy handed with their stereotypes. And I mean, the, the one that stood out the most to me was the the rich guy, J.R. Haddon. He was literally Charlie from Charlie's Angels. He was watching her on cameras, which thinking about it back, I think he was actually supposed to be, quote, quote, God, constantly watching her and, you or know. Howard Hughes, the crazy, rich, eccentric, crazy person that just stays away from everybody. Well, yes, but I, I viewed her, look, thinking back on it, I viewed him as like a god type that was watching her every move, knew everything about her, was kind of being the puppet for everything that was going on. Puppet and that master. Could be, She's the puppet. Yeah, puppet master. And and could be for good or for bad. I mean, you don't really know at the end of the movie if it's a good or a bad. And that's the same with God, right? Is it benevolent or not? We, I mean, that there's... Sinners in the hand of an angry god. Right. So, I mean, maybe that's why that character was so 
eccentric. I don't know. But then there are others, right? I mean, there's the... The all boss, the, dick. Like, he's just a dick to be a dick. He's the typical guy boss. That I'm means, just going to do everything to I can to make my life better, even if it steps on your face. Right. All the political people. Completely yeah. dumb, blowhard people that just speak yeah. out of their butt. They have no real opinions. They're just literally what you would expect. And even uh, Joss, the the pastor guy, he's the typical hippie pastor. I mean, he's smart and I enjoy him, but like he's he's the character of a hippie. Like that's mm. what he is. So, I mean, did those stereotypes affect you at all? Because the Charlie's Angel one really bugged me. Like that was like a, I had to keep telling myself like a... I mean, I didn't really have a... I mean, I didn't have a problem with it. I did write down... Uh, that guy's a dick, like several times. Yeah, for the guy the... who originally went to Gremlin, Gremlin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gremlin or something, whatever, whatever, whatever yeah, his name was. Whatever his name was. He wasn't important. He's dead. Yeah, he blew up and doesn't really bother bah. me. Uh, but I didn't think anything other than he's just a jerk. I, he's a shit person. Like, that's, there are, I know a lot of shit people. Like, you've met bad people in your life. Like, that's just. Yeah. A character flaw that they don't seem to care to work on. Okay, so it didn't bother you. No. A lot of them were very two-dimensional. No, not really. Okay. Um, okay, so alien presentation. So people were bothered by the fact that aliens... Um, the whole movie is called Contact. You're expecting contact with an alien. And then when she finally contacts an alien, it's in her the father. representation of her father. So there are two thoughts on that. I, I would have liked to have seen some kind of non-human person uh rep, just an alien representation that would have been great because there are some iconic alien representations on screen the actual alien, alien. <laughs> uh, i mean predator is a great alien character uh i mean et the, the whole star wars cinematic universe star trek the, there are so, so many things you could pick from at the same time, it is kind of nice that they don't show you that because it leaves it up to your imagination and it ties it more back towards the, the religious side of it where it's not some tentacled monster in the sky. It's a representation that we can understand and comprehend. Right. Which, yeah. which God made us in his image apparently. So it's, it's, it's harkening back to that. So he's, it's something to be familiar with and similar to, so that you're not freaked out. Agreed. I, I mean, I actually really enjoyed that part of it because I felt like it was showing that we as humans try to make meaning out of something that we don't understand. So maybe the hum- maybe the alien didn't present in the form of, of her father, but that's what she could understand and comprehend. So that's how she saw it. And that's how she received the information that to me makes the most sense because it's going to be information that she would not be able to understand. It's out of her grasp. So I actually liked that more than like this big green tentacled monster. Like, I mean, do we really think that's how aliens are going to present? Because I just, I mean, it's just, there's more power in your imagination than that. So you just, you get to create whatever the alien looked like in your mind because they're presenting a, a version that is, something that you are able to be familiar with right so i just it's a it's a it's a double side of the coin like they they would have gotten criticized if they did an alien because then it's that alien is the alien and if it's not a good alien right because there have been bad aliens on screen as well well of course so it's just it's you're damned if you do no matter what you do yeah damned if you do damned if you don't it's a lose-lose right um before i get to my last topic did you have any that you wanted to bring up uh, I did kind of want to talk that, uh, that's basically that scene right there is how I envision aliens coming to earth at some point in the past and being seen as God. Okay. What do you mean by that? Well, so I'm not saying that it has happened. I'm not saying that aliens are real, although the math would suggest that they are. Why would we be the anomaly? Thank you. <laughs> Why can't God fuck with aliens? But if in the past aliens had come down to Earth before modern civilization, 
so either cavemen or pre-civilization, and interacted with humans, how else would we have explained it? Other than, well, that's God. Yeah, he just came out of the sky, and there's like this light behind him. Came so. out of the sky, he's able to do all of these crazy things. He's floating. He he zapped Bob, and Bob disintegrated. <laughs> like... He told me to do all these things, and you best believe I did them. <laughs> yeah, he built a pyramid, like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, it all harkens back to, I mean, the connection between the two. The yeah. idea that they, they could be the same. We don't know. I mean, there is no way to know. So I, I think that's really interesting to look at it. From that well, I think it's, it's, it's a parallel to, I think religion originally was to explain just natural phenomena that we can't explain, like lightning and floods and all of the different things that we have no control over in our lives. But that's also something that we wouldn't have control over. So that could be lumped into that. Right. I mean, there's a reason that we have similar concepts in all cultures across the world. I think every culture has pictures of dragons. How do we all just come up with that? They can't be just a coincidence. So you think that dragons existed at some point? It's entirely possible. It's like a fire-breathing dinosaur or something? What, like what? Well, Maybe just a dinosaur. Maybe it wasn't a fire-breathing dinosaur. Maybe they just added that because... Because it was scary and fire yeah, is scary? Exactly. But it's just, it's one of those things to explain the unexplainable. And it's an interesting thought experiment. Well, I appreciate your thought experiment. Yeah, Thank you. That's all I got. Okay, so to end it off... Um, I have to talk about sexism. I haven't talked about the Bechtel test in quite a few movies, uh, mostly because it gets really difficult to discuss it because a lot of movies, it doesn't need to pass. Like, it's not necessary for it to pass the test. Well, Ally didn't pass. There's only one woman character. Well, like, right. that's not... Well, I mean, there's more than one woman character. But anyway, a lot of the movies don't need to pass. So I started kind of feeling like, okay, am I forcing it? However, this movie has a female lead, okay? So it should pass. It, it does not pass. If you guys were wondering, it doesn't pass. If she is talking to another female, which is very rare because there's very few other females in this movie, they are talking about a man or talking about something that has to do with a man. So. Yes. Um, does not pass. Um, I, I, and then. It she literally me, only asks another woman, how do I find a pretty dress? Yeah. For a man. Um, not sure how I feel about that. Um, and then. So I, I struggled with, is this movie sexist or is this movie showing something that's realistic in society and is co making a commentary on it? Which way are we going here? So you're seeing a woman scientist in a male dominated world, which is still pretty much true today. Um, yeah. This movie was from approximately 25 years ago. Um, it was 97. So yeah, 20, 24, but yeah, close enough. Yeah. So she's not taken seriously. Now, the reason she's not taken seriously isn't necessarily because she's a woman. It's because she... She believes in aliens. And right. there's understandably skepticism related to aliens. Right. However, she is kind of funded by a man um, at every step. There, there's never a female that could ever step in and fund her. Um, and then when she finally makes a breakthrough, the man steps in and takes over credit immediately. She never fights it. She just kind of like lets it be. None of her male coworkers who are supporting her the whole time ever step in to help her. And when she's getting towards the end of the movie and she's finally like established herself, she was the one that finally got to go because the man was killed off, obviously. Um, she's not even able to assert her views and what she saw without a man stepping in and kind of validating her and basically saying like, no, I agree with her and I believe her too. A man, by the way, that she had to have a sexual relationship with to ever actually validate her thoughts and feelings. Like, so is this a sexist movie or is this something that is making a commentary on how women had to kind of exist in the workplace back then? I don't know, but it bothered me. Like, I kept feeling like she can't do any of this on her own. Like, she has to have a man help every step of the way. I mean, that's fair. I didn't pick up on that necessarily watching this. I just saw the guy as a jerk to be a jerk because everyone knows that person that doesn't care about anyone but themselves. Okay. So I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that she was a woman. I think that he just was a self-serving dick base. Okay. I mean, that's possible. I mean, what about the fact that Joss had to be the one to stand up for her rather than anybody listening to her? I mean, I thought at the end of that, 
he the guy that was raking her over the coals and saying you don't have any sh- shred of proof when he they have 18 hours of static which is in and of itself proof that she was not that just nobody announced yeah i think that was more just the government trying to move it back under the rug because there's a, a long-standing conspiracy that uh human or governments want to hide aliens and all of that for inexplicable reasons fair but who was the one who brought up that there was 18 hours in the government a woman a female yeah. right and who said to bury it the guy i mean so is this all a coincidence i don't know darling i don't know well so that's that's something that bothers me so i'm not sure what it was meant to be i want to believe that it's the, a commentary and in in pro women rather than negative. However, we're gonna go into the other endings, and you're and I'm gonna let I want to see if the other endings that were proposed. Wait, there for were this supposed movie, to be other endings. Uh, there were proposed other endings, okay. and I want to know if knowing this changes your view of if any of this is sexist. So I'll start with the benign one that has really no sexist implications. Um, but the first other ending that they proposed was instead of um what happened happened. Um, basically aliens come and they have a nice light show and everybody on earth gets to see it. What do you think about that ending? I mean, it's unnecessary. If you're going to see them, they're not going to have to make the road trip. Right. So just, it's just kind of silly and just over the top of it. Why would you go through the whole process of having to build a machine to go talk to them when they're just going to come and say hi? Right. Exactly. Yeah, it seems a little weird. It, it, could have been be... a t- it could have been a 10 minute movie instead of a two and a half hour yeah. movie. It seems like they were doing it as like kind of like a, okay, she has evidence. So like, yeah. F you kind of thing. But like, that's too, too much. Too much, you know. Okay. So the sex is ending. Or, or maybe not. You know, maybe you'll say it wasn't. So uh, an original producer for this movie was named Gruber. And he ended up not being the producer, but was he... Was his first name Hans? I <laughs> know. Um, but he... Uh, ended up not being the producer, but said this needed to be the ending. There could be no other way. And thankfully, creative differences. Um, so his quote is, Here was a woman so consumed with the idea that there was something worth listening to. But the one thing that she couldn't make contact with was her own child. And wanted the movie to end with her struggling to contact and communicate with her child who she was now pregnant with. And that was how it was supposed to end. That's garbage. That's just really just not a good ending. Like, it it adds another 30 minutes to a two and a half hour movie. No, thank you. Well, but he's saying that it's all about contact. It's all about her trying to listen and hear, but can't connect with her own child. Now, do you not find that sexist in any way, shape, or form? I mean, no, I, not especially. I just... A movie about a woman in business or a career woman who makes it so far in her career has to end with her being pregnant with a child? That's I don't think the that's necessary way? at all. It's just, it's a bad ending. It's just awful all the way around. I don't think it's sexist or not sexist. It's just, it's garbage. It's straight garbage to start. Like That's the only way. He said it is the only way the movie can end. No, he's an idiot. and He's that... sexist. What do you mean? No, he's just, he's bad at his job. That's a really bad... Hollywood, that's that's the best you got, Hollywood? Come on. I mean, just... No. I, I'm... Uh, I'm really... I'm just discarding that as trash. No, sex is... What, what, just, it's garbage. Garbage, it goes into the garbage. Uh, I mean, it is a garbage ending, but I, I think that forcing a woman, in, a career woman, to have a baby, and that's like the only way that her story could possibly go, feels contrived and sexist to me and i just it's just it is contrived in this garbage it's it's garbage. i will grant you contrived it's just it's a trash ending yeah so are you happier with how it ended uh i mean i would have liked to be more conclusive and her not to look like she's a crazy lady at the end of the movie yeah i would have liked the woman to like go leak the 18 hours of static right. or something and stick it to the man exactly like something like hey you for know validation what? and be like she's not crazy there's 18 hours of static. Yeah, all she's going to do is leak it. That's all she's got. She doesn't mm. have to say it herself. Just exactly. be like, hey, hey, you, you, wanna, you want proof? There's 18 hours of static. Explain that. 18 hours of static, but only six seconds of falling. Right. Explain it. Yeah. You do it. I would love that. Like, ha! That would have been a way better. Yeah, of course it would have been. 
I, so. I would just see like the, the news station right at the end saying just released anonymous source yeah. says there's 18 hours of, of static from the travel. What does this mean or something? And be like, yes, you know? Eat it. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I want. Spite. Yeah. Pettiness and spite. Yeah. I'm feeling it. <laughs> totally um, agree with you on that. Uh, but that's everything I have. So do you have a history minute? Tyler's History Minute. So I have a few. Okay, of course you do. So they start off by having the broadcast come back, and it's Hitler, because it's always Hitler. Yeah, lovely. Uh, Doing the opening ceremonies for the Berlin Olympic Games, Mm -hmm. which was one of the first televised events. Oddly enough, their signal didn't go very far. So it would not have gone into space. No? No. <laughs> uh, so there's that. You just have to mention the Nazis because they're Nazis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then, let's see. So I did want to talk about a few constellation-related things. Of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, first being the Heaven's Gate mass suicide which was kind of tied into this movie with the religious fanatics yeah because it happened well they actually just... mentioned it on one of the newscasts they said right. like it was the first like signs of the impending change and, and people were believing the, the end is near right, right yeah so that was it actually came out and happened right before this movie was set to release yes so what exactly happened so it was a group of people that were a little bit crazy and by by, a little by a little bit crazy i mean very crazy (laughs) like this is likely more crazy than scientology Uh, okay so they they believed that the earth had to be recycled and your only hope was to leave every attachment including your physical body and then Depart on the hale Bop Comet. What's that? It's a comet. Oh, okay. That comes with, it's like Haley's Comet, but... How do I get there? By killing yourself and... And floating to it? Yeah, basically. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, in March of 97, uh, there was a mass suicide in California. 39 people died. They were all matching all wearing matching clothing and just it was that's horrifying a huge debacle i hope the cult leader also died yes okay good uh so there's that let's see here there's also the drake equation okay which comes up across uh which is the formula to try to determine how many aliens exist in our galaxy okay which has to be a lot yes so the, pro- the problem with the equation is there's so many uncalculable variables. So we don't know how many planets, how many stars, how many places there could be. Right, because so it's, it's the universe in, is infinite. It's an incalculable number. So they're not even talking about the universe. They're talking about just the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, okay. But even then, that's incredibly vast. Right. And so Too big for our minds to even really comprehend. There's no way that we have the number of stars that are in our galaxy. So there's no way to calculate that. So the numbers can be anywhere from zero to hundreds of thousands of aliens. But the the math would suggest that there are some kind of intelligent life form out in the world, out in the universe. Right, because what a waste of space that would be. What a terrible waste of space. Right. And why can't God fuck with aliens? Why would we be the anomaly? Right. Uh, and then lastly, just an anecdotal thing, uh, Mark Twain is connected to Haley's Comet, where he was born the same year that it came through in 1835, and later on in his life, he's like, I came in with it, I'm going out with it, I'm not dying before I see it, and he did. <laughs> oh, good for him. <laughs> he died just as it came back in 1910. Good for him. 76 years later. Full circle. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I got. Okay, you're not mentioning Versace? 
Oh, I totally forgot that Versace was murdered after seeing this movie. You know, I could not confirm that anywhere on the internet. I tried. There is apparently a Netflix mo- like miniseries, documentary? documentary or something about his murder, and I am down to watch it. Um, but yeah, it says that he got murdered right after seeing this by Andrew Cunnan or something like that, yeah. who was a mass murderer, serial killer. He killed quite a few people and then took his own life after being captured. Yeah. For lack of a better word. Or running out of places you could run. Yeah. But I find that very... I mean, obviously I sell clothing for a living. So Versace is a designer that I would clearly sell if I found it. Um, actually, I have items in my closet from Versace. I don't know why I'm saying if I found it. Um, but anyway, I find that fascinating. And now I want to watch the documentary. So, great. Add it to the list. Yeah, we have a long one. Oh, did you know, by the way, this is just a total aside. But when people say add it to the list, they don't actually mean add it to the list. It's like a trend on TikTok right now. What do you mean? <clears throat> when people say add it to the list, like if they say like, oh yeah, just add that to my list, they mean like an arbitrary, uh, like not real list. That's what people mean. No, they're, they're saying add it to the list. I will worry about it when I have to worry about it. Yeah. So there's other things that are more pressing for Right, so the TikTok trend right now is show me your list. And people are like laughing about it and like, oh, you know, like putting like a random blank piece of paper up or something. And I'm like, Oh, no, no, no. When we say it, like, if y'all want to see, oh, like, I, she I has mean. pages and pages. <laughs> I thought, I thought everybody pages did when they said add it to the list. I thought that meant everyone was like me. <laughs> no one is like you. You're one of a kind. <laughs> oh. But anyway, I just thought that was so funny. There is no one like you. <laughs> That's really mean. But anyway, I found that amusing. Um, okay. So we have to do audience ask because you guys are amazing. <laughs> Audience asks. We actually have audience asks. We do. Oh my and, god! And we got them the day I posted it. So wonderful. Um, that okay. must mean people miss our podcast. Um, or it means everyone's seen this movie, which is probably more true. So we're gonna start with the one that everyone's probably wondering why we haven't really had this discussion yet. So um, two people actually brought it up. So. The Vern, as well as Ryan Terry. Ryan Terry, we miss you. I need to just say that. I mean, I'm mentioning both of you because I miss you. Come back to us. Come back to us. Um, okay, so um, The Vern said, I'm sure everyone has commented on the whole science versus religious debate. The movie addresses, I love the flick and look forward to hearing a discussion. And then Ryan Terry said, I haven't seen it in a long time, so I'm afraid I don't have much to say, but I do remember the posited arguments on science and religion. While those two approaches to life are not mutually exclusive, they actually answer one another. It does make for a thoughtful theme. So, I mean, we've kind of debated since the movie, kind of, since we watched the movie, the science and religion thing. And I want to just state that I predicted within the first third of the movie wh- which way this movie was going, and you were like, no, I can't. I had forgotten this. I haven't seen this movie since 97 or like 2000. Like I, when just, I just wanted to say that I, I was, was right. When I, I actually like, watch a film, I'm usually pretty good at predicting I it. was like 10 at the time of watching this movie. <sighs> I predicted it. I just wanted to get that out there. So, science versus religion in this movie. So, they do a a very good job of trying to have them cohabitate for this movie. So, it's... They're not trying to say one is right, one is wrong. Which is certainly a valid opinion. You don't have to take one approach versus the others. They're not... They're not things that are traveling in opposing directions. Okay. They're, they're ideas that are going in the same direction, trying to explain things that are taking different routes to get there. Right. They're, as I think Joss said, uh, both looking for meaning, looking right. for truth. So they're, they're going the same direction. They just are taking different directions to get there. And I think the hard part is that we, we forget that and we just we assume that if you have to believe one, you have to throw out the other. And we've gotten away from being able to, to to balance both of them, I feel. Right. So, I mean, I think that... Uh, so, the movie does a good job of comparing the belief that God exists versus the belief that aliens exist. And they kind of put them on the same level of saying, okay, so you have to have faith to believe in both, correct? Right. Like, yes. in both cases, you need to have faith and you have to believe without tangible evidence that this exists. Now, people on the science side will say, well, I mean, the math bears it out. Like, aliens have to exist because math. And people on the religious side will say that 
There are too many unexplainable things in this universe to believe that it's all random and there's no there's no overarching being of some sort having an impact. It it, it it's not possible. Which is which is a inc- which is a completely fair thing to say. So I I fully understand the Big Bang theory and I fully in in the broad picture. I'm not a astrophysicist. <laughs> Clearly. You so don't I, say. So I, I understand that side of it. I can also understand the argument of not being able to comprehend something from nothing. That's a very difficult concept for the average person to, to grasp. I also can understand life coming from no life being another thing where there has to be an active hand in something. So something has to have changed. And for something to have changed, something has to have acted upon it. Right. And people are saying that it's it's divine intervention versus just a random combination of things given enough time. Right. Which is entirely fair. I think, for me personally, I think religion is trying to explain things, but they then accept that things are not explainable. Whereas science... Things are unexplainable yet. It's we don't know, but we will know. And it's just a, it's a different different mindset. So people that are deeply religious will say have I believe and that's good enough for me. And the scientist is gonna say, I don't know, but I'm gonna try to find out. And I might not find out, but the next guy might, or the guy after, or the next guy, or the next guy. Because it's it's built on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I I I liked the fact that they there was a part in the movie where Joss is talking about he had some kind of experience that made him know that God had to have existed because he can't explain it, he doesn't know why, but in his body he just knows that based on everything he knows that has to have been God. That's the only thing that makes sense and he just knows. He feels it, he knows. And then the same thing happens with her when she goes up to see the alien and she says I know that it wasn't like a fever dream or a reaction to whatever happened. You it wasn't know. a hallucination. It wasn't. Right. I just know I know my body. I know my soul. Like, I know. So yeah. I, I liked that they compared the two because it, it, it reminds you that you, in both situations, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in what you hold true for values. And they're not mutually exclusive. There can absolutely be scientific explanations for things that we may attribute to God and also not uh, scientific explanations for things, religious explanations for things that we have attributed to science at some point. Both things can be true and they may be the same as you said before. Maybe God coming down was the aliens and the aliens are the higher powers that we are seeing kind of play us out as puppets. Like that could be true too. There's no evidence to suggest otherwise. So Who knows, right? I mean, there is no one to say. So I I thought it made an interesting comparison and kind of made it uh, a little bit more real to see how realistic some of these beliefs are. Like if you just kind of remove yourself from the kind of extreme views of religion or science. So. Yeah, I I think that's entirely fair. I just, it's, it was a a very tastefully done representation of, Showing that there's more that we have in common than we have apart. Right. We should spend more time working on the commonalities rather than the differences. Exactly. So humans should work together and realize that we are all basically the same. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. We are well over time, but I do have one more audience ask because, you know, I'm not going to just like not do them. Um, so I used to watch this, um, which is a, looks like they also movie podcast, maybe TV podcast. Um, so check them out. Um, They said, how did the chair that was built into the pod not end up killing her when she landed? I think they mean because it, like, disconnected and it was floating around in that pod thing. So when she landed, you would assume, right? It landed on her? I I mean, that's what gravity would suggest, right? It would force itself down onto where she's laying? Uh, well, or she landed on it. I don't know. I just, there's any number of things that could have happened where... It just was not designed to do. 
It was that? not designed to disconnect. I don't know. It was designed to disconnect. I, I honestly don't have an answer other than some people survive horrible car accidents. People okay. Is that God? People are surprisingly durable. Like you hear stories about people getting thrown through a windshield and flying through the air 80 feet and then hitting a sign and being oh, able to walk away. Like Which is what religious people would say is a is a well, example just, of God. Or it's just an example of the right set of circumstance. Like, who's to say? Who's to say? Exactly. Yeah. Who is to say? It very well could have fallen separately from her. I mean, and let's she... be honest. This is a movie. She if she didn't get killed by it because she had to tell her story. The, the plot would not have worked. Yeah, plot armor. <laughs> so... Same thing that works for Batman. Batman should not be able to fight Superman. Right. Yeah. But she had to survive. So there we are. Um, but I don't know. Really, it, logically, it, she probably should have died. Oh, oh, a horrible mangled death. Yeah. Yeah. I still also don't understand the whole, she was supposed to be 50 years older thing, but then that didn't happen. So <laughs> it was only 18 hours and I, they kind of glossed over that. Time, like, is, a time is a fluid thing in this movie for that concept, but it's it's also not. Like it's, it is, but it's not. It, it's just. It's, well, it they had been, calculated it before she went and they said it would be 50 years and then not. So I guess the wormhole was like, way quick like way quicker than they thought like well i think that's probably fair they just did the math wrong just like the nuclear bombs not lighting the the atmosphere on fire it just they calculated wrong there's a rounding error somewhere in the math i thought quite a rounding error that is i don't know okay uh but that's all i've got so do you have ratings and reviews reviews I do. What do you got? So the critics score, we have Rotten Tomatoes back. The website is no longer crashed. <laughs> uh, was 66. Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, the audience score is only 78 huh. for this movie. All right. I think I'm going to be splitting the difference and going with a seven. Did I take your score? Yeah, you usually do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think seven, it's... It's a fine movie. The acting is not in terribly problematic. I mean, it is weird to see the religious nut guy job, the guy that blew up the, the machine has never had a serious acting role a day in his life. Hmm. Like he's always been the drunk frat guy at every other thing that I've ever seen him. Oh, I mean. Was he in um, 10 Things I Hate About You? Like, was he the guy that was like making out with uh, like a girl on the side and Joseph Gordon-Levitt like throws him in a closet with the girl i think so because he like that face like stood out to yeah me. i think he's in a bunch of those kind of movies where he's the the drunk idiot brad boy yeah okay just curious. yeah so that's 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 still got stuck out to me as the worst acting performance but that's not surprising uh which ironically is his best acting performance i think he's ever been in so <laughs> good good for you man progress uh but i it's a great concept. It's just, it's a little bit slow at times. I feel like they could have had a better ending if they had validated her side of things more. Yeah. And I, I understand not doing it because there's no, there's no verifying that God is real. Right. And they were trying to make that point through the whole movie that God and science are intermingled. Right. But it would have been nice to have a little bit more than just a crazy lady telling her story. Right. Understood. Uh, so I was also going to give it a seven. So screw you. Maybe next week I get to say my rating first. Um, but so I actually liked it a lot more than I expected. I expected going into this, this was going to be a four. I don't like science fiction. I don't like Jodie Foster. So I really thought it was going to be like a four. Um, but I really found the concepts really interesting. I kind of like thinking about things like that and kind of being challenged on what I already believe in. Well, there's there's a lot of great thematic elements to this movie where it's just it's a, a lot of great concepts that are thrown in yeah um it's also much more realistic than i expected it to be for an alien movie um they based it a lot more on like real science and real data than than basing it on like you know going in spacesuits and going qq type thing um definitely more realistic than i expected um so i really did like that but the sexism part of it that you don't agree with but I, it was glaring for me without being able to know what the intent was that does bother me like it just makes me for feel me, like fair. we can't have a, a strong female character who 
kind of pushes her own way and kind of speaks up for herself. We can't have that. Like, she was sassy. Like, she could have fought for herself. But no, we we apparently can't. So that bothered me and that kind of knocked off some points for me. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. And it let me think a lot about things that I haven't thought about in a while. So I appreciate it for that. So... Well, do you think that the controversy around Jodie Foster had anything to do with the ratings? For the controversy regarding her getting pregnant and then them not knowing who the father was. Well, that and being suspected of being closeted gay. She is gay. Yeah, well, she is gay, but just the whole thing where she was snubbed at the Oscars, and then there's a whole controversy. Do you think that could, affected what the ratings? people i mean it no, not for us but for just it definitely could have because i do know that she struggled a lot with people kind of prying into her personal life when it was definitely not needed and they were also, it's also suggesting, damn business who cares yeah they were also suggesting that the father of her baby was like producers or something that she worked with which was just i mean i mean never validated or invalidated but also none of anyone's business no um and also her sexual orientation is none of anyone's business uh, i it shouldn't affect whether or not you like her as an actress it shouldn't make no i, I don't way. i don't think it should but I mean, but it might have it absolutely that, might have and i don't know i i don't honestly remember in 97 what how people felt back then about that kind of thing. I want to believe that they didn't look down on people that were in the LGBTQ community, but also I I understand that 25 years. Back then, before the Me Too movement, Harvey Weinstein was still a thing. Yeah, so I mean, mean, it's definitely possible. Um, I hope that that's not the case, but it is definitely possible. I mean, I think she was snubbed, but it's very hard for someone to win an Oscar or win awards for a science fiction movie because people typically gravitate towards the dramas. So I don't know. Do we know who won that year? I don't. I'm actually curious if it was a man or a woman. Well, it would be have to be a woman for best actress. Oh, with best actress. You didn't say what she was snubbed for. I think it was the Oscar for best actress or something along those lines. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's very, very possible. I I know that that was a big controversy, but I, I I want to, in my heart, believe that's not the case because that's awful and horrible. But didn't she won a Golden Globe, right? Isn't that the I whole thing this happened this past weekend? Yeah, I think so. I believe she did because I remember them talking about her kissing her wife or whatever, and that was like one of the first times that she was comfortable in her own sexuality to do that publicly, and they were like applauding her for that. So we've I made mean, progress. Good for us. We've made progress, but we shouldn't be applauding somebody kissing their wife. Like that's that should be a natural thing that we expect to happen, not something yeah. that is so shocking and breaking barriers. It's just. Why Why is it taking this long? I don't get it. Fair. Sad. All right. But anyways, that is all I have. So what is your next movie? Because that is your choice. It's a Will Ferrell movie. And it's The House. Yeah. <laughs> I believe. It's so funny that you forgot. Uh, so it's it's a movie about... It's, it's basically stealing Harvard, but with Will Ferrell. But it looks good. It, it looks does cute. Look, and we needed a little bit of We a, need a lighthearted movie. We've done a lot of serious kind of... Which I still enjoy. I love serious movies, but we we don't do a lot of like no. lighthearted movies, and I think they're fun sometimes. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Well. So that's all I got. So if you guys want to talk to us outside the podcast, I am on Twitter, cinematically C. Tyler is on Twitter, blame Tyler CC. If you want him, make sure you tag me. Yes, please. Um, also, make sure that you get your audience asks in. They make us happy, as you can tell. We are very excited this week. Um, so Ryan Terry, we're looking at you. More audience asks. <laughs> basically, because you're like a genius and know way more about films than we ever will. Um, but make sure you tweet at us. We love getting them. And we also try to shout out anybody who does do that for us. Um, we've said a million times, but if you want to leave a rating, do that. It does help us a lot. And it also lets us know that people are listening because sometimes I think I'm talking to myself. Um, Which is very similar to my Twitch stream, honestly, because yeah. it feels like I'm talking into the void. Yeah. But... We, we need people to be engaged because it just makes us happier and it makes the podcast better. Yeah, it definitely does. And having something to bounce off of, you know. Yeah. Um, but if you want to talk to us and you don't have a Twitter, um, cinematicallycorrect at gmail.com is a way you can reach us. Um, but that is all I have. So thank you to Jake at Athens Music for our intro and outro music. And we'll be back next week with The House. Thank you all for listening.